Hi, I'm Chrissy Miles, and you're watching The Chrissy Miles Show, where I teach you how to take eternal truth and produce extreme results. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about why you can't be thankful if you're not content. But before we begin, subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified of more of my proven methods to get more out of life. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Christy Miles Show. Excited to share with you today. I want to talk to you today about why it is impossible to be thankful if you are not content. But I want to help you redefine what it means to be content because so many of us have, I think, really downplayed or downgraded what God wants to do in our lives because we kind of feel like there's a status quo of what we should be thankful for, what we should be appreciating appreciative of. And if I go above that, then I'm kind of asking for too much. Well, I wanted to break that down for you today and help you to understand that being content is about much more than just being okay with a very low position in life. Being content is about having everything that you need. So check with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, where it says this, And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Now, this passage of scripture is specifically within the context of Paul writing to the churches and asking them to be generous in their financial giving. As you know, Paul was a missionary. He relied on uh, different, you know, churches to support the ministry that he was doing. And it was never really for himself. It was for the purpose of being able to send him to new groups of people in order to share the gospel. And so whenever a new church would get started, he would basically write to them and say, hey, I'm getting ready to do a ministry over in this area. And if you would send some support there, we could essentially help these people get to know what the gospel is all about. And so Paul is encouraging them in the manner of sowing and reaping is what he calls it. Meaning that when you're sowing something financial, when you're giving a financial gift on behalf of bringing the gospel to people, it has a tendency to come back to you because it is the principle of the seed that is at work. Now, Paul specifically says, that God is able to make all grace abound to you. So right out of the gate, it's important to understand that financial prosperity is really all about God's grace abounding in your life. So there's a video that I shared not too long ago about how when you get into the flow of God's grace, you actually see things happening in your life that are beyond what you could actually do if you were just working at it by yourself. And this is kind of what grace is, is really all about. It's about God's effort and energy, his power working in your life, producing things in you that you cannot really do all by yourself or all alone. So Paul basically is saying here right from the beginning that if you want to see your finances multiply, if you want to see what you are putting your hand to multiply, then you have to understand how God's grace abounds to you. And there's a lot we could go into with that, which we don't have time to, to really discuss. But then he says that the purpose of God's grace coming into your life for the sake of improving your financial situation is so that you can have all that you you need. Now, this is important because the whole premise behind being a cheerful giver or being generous in your giving is that if you do not feel content with where you are currently at in life, you will have a very hard time giving into things that are related to God, giving into the ministry. And sadly, the church is in such a place, uh, financially speaking, where people are in so much trouble financially because they have not understood God's promises about prosperity that they're really not able to give to the fullness of what God would even desire for them to be able to experience. Because remember, it's not just about you giving sacrificially, but it's about what comes back to you, not in necessarily a physical and tangible way always, but what comes back to you in terms of the fulfillment that you get in partnering with God in a ministry, in a work where, where he is uh, multiplying the gifts that you give him in order to benefit and bring other people into the kingdom of God. So Paul's saying that it is important for you to understand God's grace and that his desire is for his grace to abound in your life so that in all things at all times, you can have all that you need. Now, another translation talks about this word all as in all sufficiency or contentedness. Now listen to a couple of the words that really define contentedness as it relates to this passage. Uh, Self-satisfaction. 
um, being enriched in everything, being bountiful, which causes this thanksgiving to God. So having everything that you need is about being enriched. It's about being bountiful. And he says that he wants you to be enriched and bountiful in all things. So that at all times that you simultaneously have everything that makes you content, everything that you need. So that word for contentment there, it literally means that you would have a a singleness of thought. Now, you might ask, you know, what does that have to do with being content financially? Well, when you're single minded, okay, your mind is not racing around trying to figure out how to pay bills, how to get groceries, how to put gas in your car, how to get your kids the things that they need for school. When your mind is racing with all of those things, you cannot be single-mindedly focused on the ministry that, that God would have for your life or on focusing on, on how you can improve and benefit and, and participate in expanding the kingdom of God. You can't, you're not singularly focused. You're not of a single mind. Your mind is racing in all of these different ways, trying to figure out what extra job you can pick up. How can you make a little bit more money? How can you pay off this debt? How can you um, figure out how you're gonna make your car payment? What happens if the refrigerator goes out? You see, when we are not financially stable in the way that God intends for us to be, our mind is racing constantly trying to find a way to take care of our needs. And when your mind is so filled in this temporal world, in taking care of your own physical and financial needs, there is no way that you can spend time thinking about how to expand the kingdom. I mean, when is the last time that you sat down with your spouse and you asked each other and and with your family, guys, how are we going to expand the kingdom of God this year in our lives? probably have never done that. (laughs) Most families don't. But you see families that are not focused on how to make the next buck or on how they're going to pay their mortgage or their car payment or how they're going to get through college or how they're going to put groceries and food on the table. When people don't have to focus on those things because they have learned how to receive the grace of God in their lives in such a way that they have all that they need, guess what they can spend their time focusing on? They can focus their time and attention on doing something that God has placed on their heart to participate in the expansion of the kingdom of God. You know, there are so many times that people come to me when they start experiencing the grace of God. I know that the grace of God is working in their life because the first, one of the very first things that happens to people is they start dreaming about something that they can do for the kingdom of God. I mean, recently um, I had somebody come to me that said, hey, you know, we have this property in this kind of weird part of town and it's been a real pain to us because we found out that we've owed back taxes on it, that we couldn't we couldn't really pay. But now we started thinking about it. What if we, instead of selling this property and just getting out from under it, what if we use this property in this depressed neighborhood in this, this uh, you know, questionable area of town? What if we put like a community garden there and we were worked with kids in the area and showed them how to garden and how to um, how to produce food for themselves. That is an example of someone who is experiencing the grace of God in their lives. It's improving their financial position. And because their financial position is actually improving, their mind is actually free to think about ways that they can use their life on behalf of the gospel. This is why God wants us to be not just content in the in, from the standpoint of like, well, I'm okay and I don't need anything else, but that, that you would have all sufficiency in all things. You know, just as well as I do, that you can put together the greatest budget in the world and there's always something that comes up that is not on the plan. Have you ever been there before? You have this great budget, you're following it, and boom, something happens that you didn't expect. And then all of a sudden you're dipping into your savings and you have, you know, to to replenish that savings three and four, you know, months in order to get back to where you once were. And then boom, all of a sudden something else hits. There are always unexpected things that happen. What if you had a relationship with God And God's grace was flowing through your life in such a way that not only did you have your surplus of savings, but whenever those rocky times hit in your finances, that there was just a supernatural provision for it, that you had all that you need at all times, that you didn't have to skip a beat, that you didn't have to wonder, oh, is this going to drain our savings? Or, oh, how how are we going to get back on track? Are we going to have enough for Christmas this year? What if there was a way for God's grace to abound in your life in such a way that you had all you needed at every time, no matter what? 
what came your way, no matter what trial, what circumstance, what unforeseen expense came your way, you always had God's grace working in your life, producing and providing for you more than what you needed. If that were the case, if if every Christian operated that way, now remember, this is Paul writing to the entire church. It wasn't just Paul writing to a pastor. It wasn't just Paul writing to the super apostles. It wasn't Paul saying a couple of you rich people can experience this. No, he said that he his prayer was that, that God's grace would abound to them in such a way that at all times, having all sufficiency, being content in every single thing in their lives, they would have enough left over in order to give unto every good work. Because in the same way that difficulties come by and try to steal finances away from us, guess what? Opportunities come by as well. There are so many unlimited opportunities. You've probably experienced them yourself where you hear about, you know, like this, this real estate investment, or you hear about, you know, this financial investment or this job opportunity, or, you know, just this unique way that you thought, wow, if I had a little bit of money, wouldn't it be cool to kind of invest in that or to get into that? Or, wow, there's this opportunity over here that if I had a little bit of money, I could insert myself in that and I could continue to grow. So in the same way that negative things want to come in and steal away your finances, opportunities want to come your way as well to to help you to uh you know take on this path this this grand design that, that God has for your life in order to advance the kingdom of God. And so Paul is writing to this church in such a way and basically admonishing them and encouraging them that God is able to make all grace abound to you so that this can happen. So that any time an opportunity comes your way, you have the money to invest in it, either for yourself personally or for your family to grow your personal net worth or your to you know to grow your influence, but also when kingdom opportunities come your way. Can you imagine if someone, you know, your pastor was able to call you and they knew that you were the guy or you were the girl in the church, that whenever there was a kingdom opportunity, that you had the resources to give to it. How awesome would that be if your pastor or your leader could count on you for that, that your business and what you were producing and what God was doing in in your life created such a surplus and such an overflow that whenever the kingdom had a need, whenever there ministry had a need, they knew that they could call you and that you would have enough to take care of that need. How awesome would that be? Wouldn't that be so fulfilling and so rewarding uh, to, to be among the people who could help take care of God's kingdom and see it expand and grow? You know, I know that as I'm even saying these things, it is quickening something on the inside of you where you're like, yes, that would be so awesome that I could be that. Well, guess what? Paul was writing to the church encouraging them that if they understood and received God's grace and what it was designed to do in their life, that they could literally get into a position where they could have everything that they would need so that they could be fully single-minded. They could be of singular focus, not worrying about where their next you know meal was going to come from, where their next check was going to come from, where their, you know, their next car payment was going to come from, or how they were going to take care of it. No, that you would not have to focus on those things, that instead you could be singularly focused on on the purpose and the plan and design that God has for your life to take the gifts that he's given you and to use those gifts to expand the kingdom of God. That is God's plan for us. This is why we cannot be fully generous unless we have learned to tap into God's resources in this way. Now, I'll tell you that, you know, we're still growing our actual physical finances, if if you can describe it like that. But I know that for us personally, there is a flow in the understanding and the mindset that we have of God's grace that whatever comes our way, we are able to say we can we can do something about that. Now, again, I might not be able to take care of the whole thing or the whole issue, but we know God well enough and we understand his grace well enough. His grace flows in our life in such a way that we believe that he will make a path and he will make a way for us to give unto things that before it would have been like, well, I don't think we can afford that. Now, when an opportunity comes our way to be able to give into the kingdom of God, our answer is how can we not afford to not do it, right? Or how can we afford not to do it? There's an opportunity that is coming to us. And because we've learned how to operate in, in faith and in favor and the grace of God, we don't have to necessarily take care of, you know, the whole bill, but we know that when we sow into those things and when we when we put resources into those opportunities that come our way and we get in at whatever level that we're capable of getting in at, and sometimes it's, you know, $25 a month, sometimes it's $5 towards something, you know, sometimes it's $1,000 towards something. 
we have now the understanding and the revelation of how God's grace works. And because we are not spending all of our time thinking about how is this going to happen? How are we going to take care of this? And we have things that come up all the time. I just had a leak under my sink happen where I had to get the garbage disposal chain, you know, $360. And then the plumber had to come back the next week and, and install a new faucet because that was leaking $160, right? That's $500 before Christmas or more that I didn't plan on spending. But you know what? I know the grace of God. And I know that he has the capacity to provide everything that I need so that at all things, at all times, I can still give unto every good work. And in fact, I had a good work come across my desk the other day and I was able to in spite of what I had just put out towards the plumber to say, you know what, I can give $15 towards this. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot, but what matters is that you have an opportunity to give in faith. So this is a mindset, really, way more than it is a position or a place or a status or, or something that you have achieved, right? This is not something that you participate in once you've reached a certain level in life. No, this is a way of life. This is not about starting something once you've, you know, maxed out your retirement benefits and all of those things. No, this is about changing the way you are, are functioning in your life with your finances and trusting God to provide for you so that you can have everything you need. Part of the issue is sometimes we just don't believe that God is capable or willing to give us everything that we need, that he can do it. We don't, we can't even conceptualize how that can happen. And so we mostly just shut our reality off to that. And then we basically start sliding into what we can do to make something happen. And I'm not saying that you, you shouldn't do something you should, but you are partnering with God. This is not about you solving you know, all the world's problems by yourself. It's not about you, um, you know, putting your family in the, in the right financial position by yourself. This is about you partnering with God to see the way that his kingdom operates multiply in your life in such a way that you can, you can see your financial capacity growing. It's again, it's not always just about seeing your bank account grow, although that does happen over time, but it's about seeing your financial capacity grow. And I could talk about this for a long time because I'm so passionate about, about seeing this happen so that people get freed up in order to give unto every good work because the kingdom needs you. Whether, whether you realize it or not, the kingdom needs you. The kingdom needs your ideas, needs your leadership, needs your personality, your gifts, your resources is your influence. The kingdom needs you because there are only, there, there are people that I will never reach. There are people that my spouse will never reach, but that you will reach. And God wants to get you in a position where you have all grace abounding unto you so that in all times with all things, you can abound unto every good work. I always say it this way. If there are things that come across your desk or come across your feed or your life and you think, man, I wish I could give to that. Man, I wish I could be part of that. And you're not able to financially speaking, then that to me is an indication that you are not as prosperous as God would desire for you to be because your heart is saying, I would love to do that if I only had the resources. So what that means is that your heart has a capacity and a desire to do more, but your resources are limited to, to perhaps what you, you, what you currently possess. And so until those things match up, until your heart it reaches a place where, where it wants to give and it, it sees opportunities and ways to, to expand the kingdom and your finances can match that, then you're not as prosperous prosperous as God would want you to be. So take heart. Don't get discouraged by that. Just know that when you have a heart to give, God is looking for cheerful givers. God is looking for people who are cheerfully, excitingly um, looking for ways and opportunities to, to use their resources in order to advance the kingdom. If that's you, you can get excited because God said that he will make his grace abound to you so that you can do it. So get excited if that's you. Don't feel depressed. Don't feel discouraged. Uh, don't feel like, oh man, I, I only wish I could do this. Actually get excited when your heart starts turning on the inside and, and getting excited about giving unto a good work, maybe for your church or ministry that you love or, or even something bigger than that. Get excited because that is an indication to you that God wants to see more of his grace 
not only come into your life, but be revealed through you so that you can sow and reap a big, big harvest. So you can be a cheerful giver in all things, knowing where the resource comes from. Well, thank you for watching this week on the Chrissy Miles Show. You know, I am so excited about teaching you how to get more out of life. I wanna encourage you to get a free download. Um, This is an eight steps to get more out of life. You can find the link in the description there. I wanna give you eight concrete steps that can help you get more out of life. These are the steps that I followed. When I first got a revelation of the goodness of God, I had been a Christian for a really long time, but I had backslidden, gotten myself into a lot of trouble. And when I slowly started making that choice to say, I want to do things differently, there are eight specific things that God gave me to focus on that caused my life to do a 180 degree turn from where I had been to now living a life of fullness, traveling all over the world, living the life of my dreams in my in my marriage, having uh, just relationships and opportunities like I never thought before. This is eight steps to help you get the most out of life. So download that today. So thanks for watching the Chrissy Miles Show and join me each Tuesday where I teach you how to get more out of life.